Good morning and praise the Lord. Amazing week we are in. The Lord has kept us. The Lord has brought us this far. And this day we rejoice and we are glad in him. As we begin our week, allow me to read this particular portion of scripture, even as we share the word of God in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 13, I will read from verse number 9. Oh, no, from verse 8, I'll allow me. I'll read a couple of them. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife and disagreement between you and me, nor between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, because we are relatives. Is not the entire land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right, or if you choose the right, then I will go to the left. So Lot looked and saw that the valley of the Jordan was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the garden of the Lord, uh, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zohar, that is at the south end of the Dead Sea. Then Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and he traveled east. So they separated from each other. And Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and camped as far as Sodom and lived there. This portion of scripture um, uh, comes from a place where there was a strife between the herdsmen of Lot and Abram because of just uh, finding uh, f uh, pastures for their livestock. And so it reaches a point and Abram recommends a separation so that they will not strife anymore. When you read from verse 10, the Bible says that Lot, when he was given chance to choose, he looked around and he picked that which was pleasing. It was amazing. It were well-watered gardens, you know, and, and fields. So he chose that. And of course, Abraham takes the other. But if you are a Bible student, you will remind yourself that where Lot went to stay, that is Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a city that was had decayed morality. And at the end of the day, it got so much into God that he destroyed that entire city. This morning, and even as we begin our week, I have come to talk to us briefly about choices. That every choice we make has a consequence attached to it. Every decision we make has a consequence attached to it. Because sometimes we are victims of quick decisions and hasty choices. You just wake up and you run for everything and anything. You don't consider, you don't think through, you just get something and you run with it without even knowing more about it. Sometimes we have made choices based on what we see before us or what people have even said. We have not like really thought about it. We have not involved God in it. We just rush and do our thing and we just rush and decide and just take, I mean, make choices and do everything the way we feel like. As much as it is up to you to make your own decisions, when you make any decisions, never forget that that decision and that choice has a consequence attached to it. In as much as God would want us to walk in his perfect will, remind yourself this one thing, that God has given us a free will. And this free will means we can make choices, we can make decisions, we can choose, we have a chance to choose. He cannot force things on us. No, he will not. Remind yourself about John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes. So it is up to you. It is up to you to make a choice. Even to believe in Christ, it is a choice. You know, so everything about life is in choices. And so the choices we make should be guided of the Lord. Do not make a decision or do not make a choice out of human mind, out of looking at the situation on ground. And then you become so smart and you make a choice just thinking that I think this is the best. Can't you see? See the way Lot behaved. Why did Lot choose that side? Because it was well watered. Because it was pleasing to the eye. And so he chose that. Not knowing that he is getting himself into a very messed up society. Your choice is yours, yes, but your choice has a consequence. And the Lord these days says, before you make a choice, before you make a decision, consult of me, inquire of me. When the servant of Abraham was going to find a wife for Isaac, he goes and he prays. He says, God, 
My, my, my master has sent me on an assignment. I don't know how I'm going to go about it, yet I'm supposed to deliver a result. So he had to make a choice for that woman that will be married to Isaac. And he involved the Lord. And the God guide, I mean, God guided him, even in finding Rebecca, whom he brought home to Isaac. Don't make a decision alone. Involve the Lord in that decision. Don't make a choice alone. Involve the Lord in those choices. It has been said once again that all that glitters is not gold. So sometimes when you're thinking, you're looking at the outside and you're like, this is it. No. What is within will be revealed to you if you sought the Lord. But if you focus on the surface, you will pick something and when you get in there, you'll realize it's a mess. On the streets of Nairobi, there are times when someone buys, a, for example, a pair of shoes. You buy a pair of shoe and, and you run and looking, oh, this is cheap and it's looking nice. Oh, this is fine. Once I, I never forget, I bought a pair of shoe because I was going for a wedding. And so I bought a beautiful black shoe, a heeled one. And I went with it to the wedding on a Saturday morning. So I put on the shoe. From the, where I was staying to the wedding ground wasn't far. I walked there. But by the time I was reaching the grounds, my, my, the, whatever, the heel was already peeling off, like literally. And by the end of the day of the wedding, I went back to my flats because, man, those shoes were looking funny. But they were cheap and they were looking good. I chose that. I was choosing a wrong thing. And that is how we are. We choose things without considering. We choose things without involving God. I pray, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will help us in our decision making. You will help us in our choices. I pray that we will be people that will inquire of you, that will seek to know the mind of God on a matter or the mind of God on a decision before we go forth and just do it. Oh God, may we involve you in every decision and in every choice that even as we walk into the consequences, it will not be that which we will look back and regret why we chose that way and why we made that decision, but we will be clear that the Lord guided me. I pray that we shall have God-guided decisions and God-guided choices in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Have an amazing week ahead and may your hands cause you to prosper. You are blessed in your coming in and in your going out. I will see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalom. Have an amazing day.